So basically it was Norman Lloyd who really brought you into, or made the opportunity happen for St. Elsewhere. Yeah. And he played Dr. Ashlander, of course, right. on the show. Um, so what was that world like compared to like, you know, a, a spelling Goldberg for you? That was MTM, wasn't it? Yes, okay. it was MTM and it was Bruce Paltrow. Right. And um, it was, could not have been more different. They were, um, they were a whole different cut. They were really smart. They were really sarcastic. They were really judgmental. They were really tough. And I loved the show. I loved the scripts. And uh, so I, um, I, had, I wanted to uh, succeed. And they were tough. They were tough. And they were boys. This was the time when there just weren't a lot of women doing anything. So um, it, was, it was hard for them to embrace women into their world. And it was very hard for those of us who were breaking in to embrace that world as well. So it was a, it was a tough two years for me. But I so loved that show. I loved those stories. And, you were there uh, in uh, 1983 and four. Were the principal showrunners um, Bruce Paltrow and Mark Tinker? Were they the? Yeah. And did you have um, interactions with both of them? Oh yes. And what, what were they like? Because uh. <laughs> Mark Tinker, I know, is also a director. Oh, Mark is a terrific director. Um, he has a short attention span, so uh, I think. I think, I think Mark, I can't say enough about Mark's directing. Um, it, they were tough. They were tough. Bruce uh, was a guy whose management style was that he really liked to humiliate people in front of as many people as he could manage. And, uh, and all the other guys kind of fell into line. Um, my, I worked for Mark a bunch of different times. I worked for him on St. Elsewhere, I worked for him on um, uh, NYPD Blue, and then he came and he actually ran the last year of LA Law uh, as well. So I have a long, long history with Mark. Um, they were tough. So Paltrow, did you feel like it was like a test? This sort oh, of yeah. Constant. And, and, why, and why were they tough? Was it just in search of excellence? Is that kind of the bottom line or what? what? Well, you know, they were, but I also think that, uh, yes, they were smart and they really wanted their shows to be good. And uh, I only belatedly really kind of figured out my conflict in the situation. They, their version of storytelling was to tell the most important, heartfelt, heartbreaking stories about hospitals uh, on the backs of people, just as people are walking away, just so, so that you didn't like focus in on the high drama of it. It kind of flitted through um, and, and you sort of had to grab on to um, what was really happening and, and how impactful it was. I was, came from the I want to see what they're feeling and doing. And so I spent an awful lot of self-destructive time <laughs> trying to move the film to do what I thought it should do. And then I would just cut the living daylights out of this film and I would go, what are you doing? Just do it the way they want it. And then everything will be fine. But I had a really hard time with it. I really wanted to bend that film differently. And they got, they got impatient with me. But they're, they're smart, but you're smart too. So I, I, I assume you figured that out. But there was a real formula to St. Elsewhere. It was like, was that explained to you? Like they had the kind of a, this sort of macro story, then they had a personal story and a medical story and kind of a funny story too, and all going on in one episode. Well, that was clear. That was clear. That wasn't hard to interpret. It was how they told the stories that 
that there was no tutorial. They didn't sit me down and say, we don't want to see the front end of this. We want to see it off the backs of people. They didn't do that. I had to figure that out, and that process was painful. Um, and I wish in a way that uh, somebody had told me that at the very beginning so I could have approached it from that point of view. I was just trying to lay in what I thought the storytelling ought to be. And, that, you know, that's a problem. Um, what about the shooting style? It was sort of a gritty, you are there kind of a, a it look. Amazing. Um, it was amazing. It was handheld. And almost. also a lot of one, one shot, you know, one shots of, of extended dialogue. Yeah. Um, and there was one guy, this one guy, I, I had cut the show for a year before I realized that this one cameraman was hand holding almost the whole show and walking backwards through this hallway that you could go around and around and around in. He was a phenomenal cameraman. Was this before Steadicam even? Or was yeah, it was before Steadicam, but it was also a stylistic choice. You know, mm -hmm. these styles kind of roll through every once in a while. There was a period about I don't know, three or four years ago when every single interview I went in for was, we're going to do something that's never been done before. We're going to handhold the whole thing. And, you know, it's all at this point. They wanted that fluidity. I, don't, I think it was before Steadicam.